everybody, it's Chris from Grand Rifle Group doing a budget optic review. When I say budget, this thing is cheap, right? 100 bucks, you got an Amazon for 125, 30 bucks. Um, I'm talking about the Vic Vic Toptics, Vic Vic To Vic Optics. I guess I don't know. I can't read. Um, it says it right there. When I found them on Amazon, it was under the manufacturer of Victor Optics. Uh, so there might be change name change thing going on there. Uh, but this is the S6 1 to 6 second focal plane LVPO or uh, yeah low power low L LPBO low power variable optic. Again, it's 1 to 6. Uh, it is illuminated. It has red and green elevation. It's got the wooden edge on this side. Comes with a um, sweet little throw lever. However, it's the wrong color. Um, I don't really care. I'm probably going to rattle kit anyways. And um, I'm actually extremely impressed with it so far. I have not shot it yet. Um, by far the weakest link of the whole system is the rings. It does come with rings. They suck. They're, they're crap. So what I'm most likely going to do, I'm going to dig around. I have a, a box of uh, old mounting solutions from, you know, the, throughout the years. I will see if there's anything a little bit better in there uh, than what these things are. Uh, because the scope itself is surprisingly good. The rings, however, are crap. So try to uh, find some better ones, throw them on there. Hopefully get the scope up just a little bit higher. It's, it's not too low uh, for shooting and whatnot. However, when I look through the optic as it sits right now, um, about the lower third of the uh, of your viewing area is taken up by the pressure pad and your um, front and bus, right? Uh, especially when you have, you're getting a good C-clamp on the rifle right there, your thumb is extremely uh, in the way. Let's put it that way. Uh, once you zoom in, that's at 1x. Uh, once you zoom in to say 3 or you know 4, 5, 6, whatever it is, uh, you end up kind of looking past that area. Uh, so then you don't see it. So if you're going to leave this at say 3 or so, um, that wouldn't be an issue. But I'm going to try to pick it up higher because I like using, um, especially if I'm going to be in a building or something like that, or here at the house, I like having my uh, LPVOs uh, set at one power right out of the gate uh, and use it as a red dot until I need that magnification. That's just how I do it. Uh, so let's see if I can get some better mounting. Okay, so I checked my uh, my old mounting stuff and I don't have anything any, any better than what's on here, not at least anything higher. Um, so the current plan right now, I gotta place an order anyways. So I'm gonna uh, pick up a a zero degree uh, rigid mount from Arkin Optics. Uh, it happens to be the same tube size and it should bring us up a little bit higher uh, so that when I actually do get uh, an Arkin's, uh, I think it's called the EP8, their uh, LPVO, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull that over and, and try this out on the rifle. Um, why did I get this, right? Um, I'm definitely not in the market of just putting any old piece of crap on a rifle, right? Uh, Part of the, the mission statement around here is to actually provide a customer with a solution that actually works, not just some random crap uh, that we can mark up 10% and, and make a little bit of money on it, um, but something that's actually going to, it just, it has to work, right? Um, so this is a $100 optic, right? Um, so far, I'm, I'm actually very impressed with it. Um, the turrets aren't total crap. Uh, they have, they do pop up, it's pretty tight. Um, there's a little bit of mush, um, but audible and um, tactile clicks. Um, they lock down nice and good. Same thing with the windage, same dealio. Um, the reticle is is not very very good. Uh, it has a horseshoe reticle. I'll show you pictures here in a minute. What it actually looks through, how it looks through the scope. Uh, but it's got a horseshoe reticle with a center dot, and uh, when they say a Christmas tree reticle, I mean it is, it is like a legit triangle of, uh, of windage and uh, drops of tensions. 
they're supposed to be mills. They're supposed to be, uh, I believe they're, uh, they're one or point one or point two uh, mill increments. Um, there's, I, I found it on their Amazon page of like the breakdown of what the reticle is supposed to be. I didn't find it in the uh, in the user manual. Um, so I don't know. I don't like the reticle very much. So I could have just done a simple uh, BEC style reticle, and I would have been perfectly happy with it. Um, but you know, they're trying to go a little up above and beyond with the reticle. So that'd be one thing that I would definitely scrap from the optic itself. Is it going to work? I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm going to take this out right now. Uh, we're going to zero it uh, with some 62 grain, uh, you know, federal green tip. Um, and then I'm going to push it out to about 250 or so yards. I'm going to do a 36 yard, um, 36 yard zero on it. Push it out to about 250 or so. Uh, if my memory serves correctly, that, that the distance from my next available backstop is. Um, and if all goes well there, then uh, tomorrow I'm going to take it out even further. Uh, closest target at the dead horse range is about 430 yards. So we're going to start there and see what we can do with it, uh, pushing out a little bit uh, further than that. So first things first, let's get it on the zero range and uh, see what happens. All right, everyone, out here at the range. Uh, I got a target set up at 36 yards, so we're going to do a classic uh, Marine Corps Battlefield Zero. Uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm not actually using the 62 grain uh, green tips. I'm actually going to use the, you probably can't see it, but uh, uh, it's going to be um, AAC 75 grain uh, Saber Black Tip. Uh, I'm going to be taking Sandwich to a course. Uh, here next month, so figure I'd zero it now and try it out with this optic. Uh, if this scope makes it this uh, makes it far enough, then I'll take it to the course and put it through its paces and see what happens. So let's get shooting. All right, so my first three shots were right down there. Had a little vertical stringing on it. I brought it up uh, six minutes of angle. So I had that second group right there. Then I brought it down to about uh, five and a quarter. And that was that group. So I brought it over here to the small target. And that was my uh, finish zero. Uh, obviously, this is 36 yards, so that's not, you know, anything crazy. Uh, but it's at least holding a zero, and the bullets are going where I want them to go. So... Step one complete, let's uh, set it out a distance. All right, so got the uh, steel set up. It's a full-size IPSC. Well, it's pretty close to full-size. Um, at 217 yards, so not really far. Um, we're just gonna see if we can hit it. We should definitely be able to hit it. It's not very far at all. Um, just gonna kind of test the optic and make sure that I can make hits this distance and uh, this all goes well then tomorrow take it out to the further ranges and uh, see what happens out there so right now I got eight rounds in the gun and uh, see what happens Helps if you uh, actually charge the gun. Oops. So I hit high on that one. Uh, looks like a foot and a half uh, up to the right. So take another shot, kind of confirm see if uh, that was me or if I'm hitting the exact same spot and make an adjustment.
Is that the brass hitting the phone? So I went back and watched that, and it just happens to magically start falling right before I, I break the shot, which is weird. I thought the brass was knocking the phone down, but... Hold on. Try this again. Let's try this. So the last shot, I did have a hit. Looks like I hit in the upper right shoulder. My right, it's left. So let's uh, see what we can do again. Okay, that was dead center, right about the upper thoracic cavity. high over the target. High over the target again. So I'm definitely favoring right on the target. So oh, wrong way. All right, let's get some more ammo. All right, so grab some more ammo. Um, yeah, just kind of keep hitting it and uh, talk about some pros and cons here uh, after this next group. So that little adjustment was apparently all I needed, and uh, let's talk about it. All right, so the Victoptics, I don't know, I guess put it in the comments if I'm saying that correctly or if, if I'm just stupid. Um, the S6-1-6. Well, it seems to function just fine. Um, pros, uh, at that, that low power, the glass is super, super clear. Um, I mean, the turrets actually feel pretty good. They actually stay locked down, and when you need to, they actually turn and go back to the locked position. Now, it could be a little nicer. Um, the windage I had to mess with a little bit before it actually locked down, um, but nothing, you know, too, nothing I was concerned with. Um, when I was mounting this on the rifle, I did throw a little bit of Loctite uh, in this throw lever just to make sure it didn't rattle loose. Uh, I mean, all in all, for 100 bucks, it is not bad. Uh, I really I really can't complain too much, but uh, here's the complaints. I cannot seem to get this to really focus. This is this is fixed parallax at, I'll see if I can get a picture of it here, at this 200 yards. I noticed that at the 36 yards on full magnification, it just seemed out of focus like uh i went to immediately reach for the parallax knob to make an adjustment uh so that i can bring you know my target and my reticle into focus and this doesn't have one it's fixed parallax uh so i thought well i don't know maybe maybe just this closer yardage on on full magnification it's just not gonna be you know um uh, maybe it's just a little bit outside of that uh you know parallax adjustment or that that fixed parallax range so out here at the 200 yards you know, 217, um, kind of the same thing. It really, it seems that once you hit that, that six power, it really, um, it just doesn't get very clear. Now, what is very clear uh, to some people, you know, this might look like absolute garbage to other people. This might look great. You know, according to my eyes and this lighting condition, which is, it's getting a little dark. Uh, you can kind of see here in the bed of the truck that it's, you know, not exactly bright out. Um, that, that is definitely a con for me. Um, if I had paid over, you know, $300 for this thing, I would 100% send it back. Granted that I paid 100 bucks for it, mm, I don't know. I, I think it would be, I think it's, I think I'd let it slide. Um, now, could I identify things? Absolutely. Um, if there was an individual standing on that hillside, I could 100% see them. I could see what they were holding. I could, um, you know, if the text was large enough, I could read text on, on a shirt. Um, I could probably make out 
you know, a, uh, uh, just for argument's sake, I could make out like maybe a badge on somebody's ball cap or something like that. Uh, I, I could still see, you know, just fine. Uh, would I like it to be more clear? Sure. Um, that's, that's really it. That, that's really the only thing I have gripes about. Um, and again, the mounts, the mounts are very, very cheap. Uh, so I think with replacing, um, uh, this mount with, a, with a, a one piece, you know, mount probably from Arcan Optics here, uh, I think it's really going to kind of pick this, this optic up and make it a little bit better. And could I live with the, the focus on the high end? Um, yeah, I don't know, probably for a hundred bucks, I could probably do it. Uh, again, if I paid more money for this, then no, I wouldn't. Uh, but it's, I mean, this is, this is the cheapest optic I've ever put on a rifle. So, uh, yeah, there it is. Let me know what you think.